to the keynote speaker. Thank you for invitation and thank you for the time. And I would like to thank you and welcome here all my distinguished colleagues in Alamot and on this virtual platform. I, I gladly listen to your speeches and I expanded my knowledge and I had I did my doctorate in Bratislava and now I am here in Alamot and my doctorate I received my doctorate on this university and I would like to welcome my professors as well. So the strategies of Slovak conceptual artists in the period around 1968, projects, events, issues and research, that's the topic of my speech. Uh, with the reminiscing on the action art and conceptual art in the second period of the 1960s, it is important to note that it should be in the broader context. We should include Minarchik, Filko, Zelipska, Koller, Bartosz, Sikora, and others. And in the last two decades, they are being under put under more scrutiny and, and through these artists the conceptual strategies in Slovak art can be perceived and their artworks should be evaluated in a new perspective. The politics and culture in Czechoslovakia in the second part of the 1960s was appreciative of the towards the artistic work and it supported the work of artistic galleries and art museums the private collections in didn't exist at that time in Czechoslovakia young artists therefore decide to put they are put their use in different way after 1972 in the after the period of normalization uh, conceptual art conceptual artists and other artists were excluded from the public life however they were not discouraged they tested their new artistic work in a different ways in the during the 1970s and 1980s in Czechoslovakia they were parts or unofficial Slovakian art scene and our contemporary knowledge confirms that their work was meaningful distinguished guests I will try to convey information about Slovakian art and I will try to put my perspective. I will include the events, texts and other things from that period and I hope I will get your attention. Just few notes beforehand about the conceptual art. This art was established in 1961 by Henry Flint and his essay of concept art. Quote, the concept of concept is for conceptual art the same thing as the music for music. Conceptual art is a form of art and it includes language." End quote. In an anthology there were papers by Brecht, Cage, Maria, Yoko Ono, Higgins, Paika, Marcius, 
in George Masiunas, Estonian emigre. Arguments for creation of conceptual art were these. Firstly, they tried to establish a system into chaos and to activities and to the art structures. And secondly, they wanted to react on a new paradigm and the concept of pure mathematics and its aesthetic value. The theoretical studies include also the conceptual art. The relationship between language and mathematics is utilized by many authors and in many discussions. However, in the United States, it was noted that by Levitt and Koshut that conceptual art is not illustration of mathematics or philosophy of language, but art on its own. It was an uh, explanation about the conceptual art and other characteristics were further developed. Permutivity, which connects it to computers, then inform informativity, seriality, and in the United States, they developed the conceptual art as a opposition of a pop art. I would like to note that colleges in the United States enabled young students a free choice of program combinations so they could study mathematics and dance or arts. And new theory was developed. And just before the theoretical concept uh, was established the movement of fluxus in the 1950s in the United States. It was a free union of authors who experimented and did not respect the boundaries and rules of the artistic world. It was established by George Masiunas and it is still valid today. Fluxus was focusing on music and visual concept as performative art, body arts, and visual poet poetry. In 1960s, in the AG Gallery in New York, he was, he penetrated the AG Gallery in New York and the Fluxus then transferred into Europe, in Germany, in the city of Dieseldorf, and then other artists followed, Beis, Pike, and others. And the most distinguished was Wolf Vostel. The conceptual art and the exhibits were delayed about 10 years. Exposition, conceptual art and conceptual aspect in 1970 in New York Art Center was developed and created by Joseph Koshut. And it tried to establish a strict form of this art and a competitive exhibition was in the modern, on uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, in the same year, there were presented American and European authors who reflected mental shift in the artwork and in flux art. So the boundary was blurred between these divisions. New thoughts penetrated into conceptual art in the United States. And this was reflected in the Czechoslovakian intellectual environment, especially in the jazz section led by Carlos Brom Sr. In 1982, two books were published, Minimal and Earth and Concept Art, 
which included biographies and interpretation theories of authors and their theoretical studies. The situation in the European culture differed from the American one. In 1960, in Paris, Pierre Restrani published a manifesto called New Realism, and it was parallel to artistic tendencies of pop, pop art, and the New Realism and pop art refused graphics from visual reality, but also sculptures, and they the basis was the object of the world around us. Their some aspects as segments were included in their works, and contemporary individual was reflected as a product of consumerism and the consumerism of civilization. New realism was opened to changes and to new other things. So in Europe there was a creativity in the framework of classic art, art artistic fr framework and the USA reflected the fluxus new realism and it was a paradigm shift in the life and in Italian in Italy in 1960s there were a new movement arte po called arte povera and the Arte Povera authors work with segments of reality and they try to justify the tradici objetube in their works. Their artwork were, was a political work. Quote, Arte Povera is a democratic construction. The quote was by Pier Paolo Calzorari. The, the difference between these divisions was considered a confu confusing one. In 1970s, some exhibition and catalog were perceived by, against the historical background. For example, exhibition Ubi Fluxus Ibi Motus in Venezia in 1990. We can find Flux authors and Paris Realist, Chi Arte Pover or Arte Povera authors. The specificity of Slovak conceptual art it uh, mingles with uh, the work of uh, particular authors. Uh, in other words, uh, there are many works by Slovak art authors uh, which have uh, conceptual basis. Um, uh, the first and uh, most important work, uh, we have seen it from, from 1965, and this work uh, was made by three, three artists. Uh, uh, although there are signatures only by two of them, uh, and it blurs the uh, borders. Uh, we can say that this is a happening, uh, which uh, is proved by the idea of uh, busy inhabitants of Bratislava uh, in days uh, framed by Hapsok. Uh, mm, it was called happening by artists Pierre uh, Restani, uh, and uh, he, for ex because he uh, dealt with uh, young Slovak art, uh, which means also conceptual and action art, uh, from half of the 60s. When we look back, uh, we don't have to uh, agree with this uh, identification. Um, just uh, a text uh, notice uh, uh, which the inhabitants of the town uh, did not know about uh, may be uh, identified as a concept of Duchamp character. 
the collective uh, celebrations or festivities could not be uh, organized based on spontaneous uh, decisions. Uh, these events, uh, or the Alex Mlinarčík uh, proved uh, he's a good organizer uh, because this required a lot of correspondence, uh, a lot of communication, um, and he wanted to, because he wanted to involve many colleagues, artists, uh, authentic uh, actors, and also audience, uh, so that it uh, uh, turned out well as a whole. Uh, one example, memorial of Edgar Degas, uh, the main part, uh, uh, which was appropriated uh, riding uh, race uh, in Liptovsky Mikuláš and uh, auction of uh, artworks uh, uh, in uh, Bratislava. Uh, this uh, proves uh, the uh, poetic uh, feeling of the artist. Uh, uh, it includes uh, artists and uh, non-artists, uh, and it all had to be um, agreed with the participants uh, in advance. Uh, the Slovak situation, uh, we can actually uh, mention that the division uh, deployed by uh, art critics, uh, uh, gallery and uh, exhibition practice is not important for the audience or for the participants. But we have to say that the um, stone institutions or as museums, uh, their goal is not to document uh, the um, establishment of or the origination of action works uh, in in this field uh, as part of the author preparation. Uh, we can also see uh, clearly conceptual works in the Slovak area. Uh, they are proved by text, uh, by uh, sketch or documentation of uh, private uh, um, events in time. Resources of Slovak conceptual art. Uh, Slovak conceptual art uh, was proposed or uh, established namely by Pierre Restani. He was interested in Slovak art. Slovak uh, visual art, uh, and also by initiative of a uh, young Alex uh, Mlinarčík uh, during his uh, trip to Paris. Uh, Restani says, he kept searching for me for two days until he uh, ran into me in the gallery La Ravinci. Um, during the meeting Lenarci Krastani uh, or meeting Lenarci Krastani uh, happened uh, when Krastani was uh, engaged uh, in new realism. Uh, um, Alex uh, still had time to open catalogues, uh, see archives, and this is how uh, Paris uh, of New Realism was discovered, the, says, the compre compressions of Caesar, Armand's accumulations, uh, collages and decollages, uh, uh, a revival of old uh, iron, and um, the it, was, it left a permanent trace in the mythology of Paris, uh, of the new realism of Paris. Uh, all these events are uh, an education uh, in uh, the monochromatic uh, artist if Klein. This blue revolution um, resulted in a, a real apocalypse, uh, the return to natural condition in the technical Eden. Uh, the theory uh, of enclosure by John Cage, uh, the activities by George Masiunas, uh, uh, 
which existed uh, during the establishment of Fluxus. Uh, with, um, after 50 years, we can say, it was uh, Mlinarčík uh, and his meeting with Restany, which helped uh, to um, uh, which helped to step over the borders uh, in his Hapsok uh, and in, in the manifesto, step over the borders of conventional artistic types. Pierre Restani says, when Mlinarčík in uh, mid-April 1964 returned to Bratislava, his uh, thinking and his work uh, changed radically and uh, Indrich Chalupecký called this change by Slovak line of new realism. It's a very special relationship uh, of an artist uh, and Slovakia and homeland. New realism, when compared to pop art, uh, is plural and open. It signalizes uh, varied cultural situations. Um, American artists uh, were gathered in the Fluxus movement, uh, which was not there was not a parallel for it in the Europe. There was no overlap. And so it uh, su supplemented the role of pop art and also the Fluxus movement. Uh, it was in the time when uh, people forgot about uh, the terrors of war. Uh, the way of uh, depicting was radically different. Young artists uh, uh, changed their um, relationship towards life and reality. And there was no effort to uh, internalize their expression the establishment of Slovak conceptual art. We can say that uh, not many young artists could travel abroad, and except Russian, uh, people don't, didn't speak any foreign language, and in this time, Hapsok was in it was a shock for uh, the home environment. Uh, as Mlinarčík says, uh, the con concept of uh, this type of uh, work uh, spread very quickly. He uh, left Nusberg, uh, organized large uh, fireworks on uh, the Neva River, and Milan Knižák organized uh, many events in Prague or actions in Prague. Uh, there were many actions happening one after another, not only spiritually. It was Poland, Hungary, Russia, and also Czechoslovakia was visited by Pierre Stani many times. Alex Malinarczyk uh, was more of a shock uh, and was by, uh, he shocked by his work prepared for Pierre Stani, Association, French Association, which is independent association of critics in Paris. They traveled in 1966 to Bratislava and uh, they were against the uh, current art of that time, uh, representing the traditional, by, presented by the traditional sculptures and paintings of socialist realism. So um, to deny this, uh, he prepared a special artwork. He installed mirrors in uh, public lavatories. Uh, it was uh, like a homage to Sir Chevalier Godot, uh, Saint Anthony, uh, and he sent uh, invitations to public. The, the journey Mlinarčík through the world of art uh, went to Paris and other places in Europe, and 
Soon there was a reaction to this. I'm not talking about official critics, but I'm talking about works uh, by his peers. Uh, because Stanislav Filko developed uh, the topic of Hepsox, uh, and he drew uh, the projects uh, relating to that uh, he also started to implement technically uh, perfect uh, environment uh, for creative development in, for example, of the group of Yves Klein uh, and Michel Ragon. He was uh, so interested in the future that uh, this resulted in a, a book by Stano Filko, where he shows reproductions of his works, but also interpretations of his uh, works by important uh, art critics. One of them is also by Rastani. This publication is a celebration of art community. Apart from Hepsoc, uh, also includes uh, other uh, conceptual Hepsocs. Uh, it is complemented with uh, theoretical texts, uh, for example, about the environment of his uh, work. And uh, again, we can find ideas of uh, Michel Aragon. Um, this book was published in Czechoslovakia <coughs> in 66, 67, and uh, uh, now I would like to make a short break because I mentioned in my dis discussion, in, during the discussion, that uh, this conceptual art is very important. I would like to make a horizontal cross section, and I wanted to. Uh, show arts, uh, artworks which were published in uh, catalogues, for example, exhibition catalogues of galleries. But that would require another uh, half an hour. So this was my intention, but uh, if, you need, if you want, you can just imagine this. Um, <coughs> When Alex Mlinarčík, Jana Želipská, Stano Filko uh, reported the first uh, successes in Slovakia and uh, Czechoslovak uh, art scene, uh, there was an artist who refused uh, the pompous uh, nature uh, and uh, the plays, uh, children's or erotic plays. Uh, he focused on a uh, um, life of a uh, common man. Julius Koller, he um, responded to Hapsok with a simple card, uh, postcard, and called anti-happening. This uh, actually was uh, organized in as late as uh, 1970. Uh, Julius Koller, uh, came from different environment uh, than his colleagues, his star colleagues. Uh, I don't like to mention biographies, but uh, it's important in uh, Koller. Alex Mlinarčík and Jana Želipská were from so-called better families. Uh, they don't have they don't have to struggle to survive. They don't have to struggle to get attention or shine. Uh, their self-consciousness was. Uh, uh, obvious, they were star, artistic stars, and also social stars. Uh, if Klein also could use, for example, his family, and uh, they uh, gave the tone uh, to it was the elite. Julius Koller uh, came from incomplete family, from modest conditions. His mother struggled to survive, and uh, he sent Julius to uh, relatives. When he came back to Bratislava, he lived very in very modest conditions. Uh, however, he managed to show his talent for art, but he also involved in sport even uh, ice hockey and even tennis, which was uh, 
uh, analit, uh, sport of elites. Uh, um, he was very hardworking and curious. He didn't have money to travel. Uh, he at least watched uh, Austrian uh, television, which was available in Bratislava during socialism. And other information was uh, was illegal. Uh, fortunately, he could understand German. Uh, color had two exhibitions uh, in the middle sixties uh, that were uh, unnoticed by. Uh, uh, public. Uh, at that time, he uh, was painting uh, simplified uh, images of uh, uh, cities or nature and other uh, uh, elements. Um, he uh, used uh, um, uh, in his art, he uh, did not use any uh, emotions, uh, which is common to the group of new realists. Uh, he used uh, mainly uh, text, uh, and uh, he uh, tried to uh, depict a chosen element. Uh, he was inspired by new realists, uh, in particular by Ben and his calligraphic uh, signs. Uh, another uh, thing was uh, the play of uh, white uh, 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 art uh, um, colors on uh, some uh, surface. Uh, it was uh, really a uh, center of uh, attention because uh, even though we uh, tend to forget about his uh, artwork nowadays. Uh, we can also uh, call this a critic of uh, pictures and Julius uh, Scholar continued to use uh, post-law uh, post elements. Uh, in the next years, uh, it means uh, 1968 and 1969, uh, Color uh, uh, tried to uh, make anti-pictures. Anti uh, he used textile and uh, clothes and also furniture as uh, uh, the basis for his work. He painted on this, uh, for example, a uh, uh, human body or uh, something else, which uh, should be ironic. The importance of uh, his attitude to uh, the collective happenings of Alex Milenacic and Jana Zelipska, uh was shown uh, after some time. At the end of the uh, 60s, uh, color used to be uh, a kind of uh, outsider, but today we appreciate the uh, fact that he was uh, different. He did not uh, uh, have had to have uh, some uh, uh, famous uh, friends from abroad. After the arrival of uh, armies of uh, Soviet Union in uh, August 1968, uh, the atmosphere and the situation in Czechoslovakia changed. Uh, I uh, guess you will remember the first picture, the silhouette of uh, Czechoslovakia, as I showed you before. In 1986, uh, there was a new element in uh, the repertoire of color. It was the question mark, and it became one of his alter egos. Uh, it was in all his uh, pictures, all his installations. Uh, here you can see an artwork that was uh, in uh, the Gallier Museum in Paris in 1969 exhibited. Also, Alex Mlinarczyk was uh, invited to this exhibition, but he prepared a collective uh, artwork. So 
here a uh, truck and it was loaded by with uh, artworks of uh, several artists and these were exhibited there. One of them was uh, this artwork of Julius Koller. Uh, later on, he uh, sent uh, some postcards to uh, friends, and uh, this was also a political issue. These cards were later on called by the critics of Orad as uh, text cards, and uh, it uh, reflected the situation in the society in the artwork. He uh, tried to uh, uh, focus on the existence of uh, an ordinary man in a socialism, and he uh, wanted to connect the uh, uh, life of today with uh, art. So even uh, in even uh, Kolar uh, worked with political issues. And uh, when Alex Minarchik and Erik Dietman uh, announced to, uh, that they will ignore uh, the participation in uh, the, ex uh, the exhibition Danuvius uh, 68 in Bratislava, after that, uh, it should be moved to Paris, but uh, the date of the opening night had to be moved uh, because of the arrival of uh, armies. Uh, after that, there were other uh, participants as well, such as uh, Jana Zelebska or Petr Bartosz, uh, that uh, wanted to uh, exhibit their works. Uh, as well as uh, Jasov Jankovic. Uh, this sculpture uh, won uh, an award for uh, uh, his work. Peter Bartosz uh, 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 came up with an event called uh, Giving. Uh, and now I <coughs> like to ask Barbara to get go to another slide. Uh, 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 this uh, event uh, was uh, uh, in Bratislava at uh, his uh, um, previous uh, uh, elementary school where he went when he was uh, young, and he uh, put some of his works there. Uh, so he created uh, photographic um, artwork and he also worked with natural processes and this uh, was an uh, action called Egg. He uh, was uh, conducting a research into natural processes uh, uh, connected with work, artworks and he, uh, we can say uh, that there was uh, the aesthetic quality as well as you can see uh, uh, at this paper uh, uh, the activity and in the air and at earth. Uh, then there was a mixture of uh, two uh, basic non-colors, so black and white. When he also, then he also uh, tried to mix up some other natural substances, for example, sand or mud. Uh, and this was an happening with uh, his friends. He also uh, had pigeons, uh, so he was interested in uh, having a, a, a original specific uh, race of pigeons. And this uh, he connected to uh, art. <coughs> Uh, 
Officially, he tried to acknowledge his breed and nobody knew that it was a work of art. Peter Bardos explored the materials and the way in which, which is reflected in the scientific exploration. And Rudolf Sikora tried to perceive it in different point of way, different point of view. And he created a work of art from environment. He reacted on Alex Minerchik, who participated on the Paxet Gaudium in 1970s, who designated by arrows in the red, a pignet outside from the city. Rudolf Sikora joined Slovak authors who tried to search for sound in different ways. And Alex Minarczyk and Jana Zelipska reflected this in their framework. And further, moreover, they advocated for that, that the Earth cannot be perceived as a dead planet. In the meantime, they wanted to also to think about the man in the space and time. And Koller, Filko and Gazdik perceived space and cosmology and created a, prog created a project called Questionnaire and it was distributed in, Slo in Slovakia and in other countries as well. The Slovak action and conceptual art in the second part of 1960s, we have to remember Vladimir Popovich. He was a poetist and the private event in the exhibition called Spring Exhibition talked about Popovich's desire to explore poetics. And it was, it remained in the public sector and the private sector. He wanted to explore the French poetry and he visited Paris in 1964 so did, and so did Menarchik and they inspired the new realism authors and their and authors of criticism perceived the artwork from the scenographic point of view. The related artworks and the way of making an art and its connection to theater was clear when he was studying at high school. And it could be perceived as a visual book. Important position have the unrealized project, for example, by Filko Jankovic and some works from 1968 till today by Alex Menarchik. And he reflected the Paris school and especially Mike Michel Ragon and his new realism. So this was Slovak conceptual and action art and now the Central European. Artists who 
there in the 1960s tried to receive information from the American soil and they get got this information through different magazines and other newspapers as well. I also I mentioned some authors and exhibitions and they created a new Central European platform. In 1970, Peter Stembera, based in Prague, turned to Klaus Groth and he asked him if he if he tried to uh, Petr Štembera uh, discovered activities uh, of Prague uh, artists and he started to visit uh, visit them. Uh, it was my brother actually. And when Klaus Groch received uh, the photographs, he decided to uh, devote to this topic uh, in, in a wider perspective of socialist countries. Uh, he published uh, a book, Aktuell Kunst in Ost Europa, uh, which was published at the beginning of 1972. Uh, there were many artists, uh, uh, some of them did not know each other, but they uh, had heard about uh, their colleagues before. Uh, um, first time they had a proof in their, in their hands about uh, crossing the borders of traditional art towards life on one hand and towards ephemerity of the work on the other hand. Uh, the basic point in the book was uh, is the, it's the base, crucial work for Central European context. Uh, we have to say that the Slovak and Czech artists never gave up their mission, not even during the period of uh, normalization. Peter Bartosz, Stanofilko, Julius Koller and others were uh, in the context uh, um, of authors, of artists such as uh, Polish artist Stanislav Drozd, uh, Jaroslav Kozlowski, uh, who show tendency to arte povera. Apart from uh, reproductions of the works, uh, the book also showed examples of uh, the work of other 18 Polish artists. I don't, I cannot show the pictures, unfortunately, uh, but you can see the book on the internet, uh, so you can uh, uh, look at it there. The reproductions, however, are quite uh, bad quality, and therefore uh, I will show some pictures of other works which are also relevant, uh, and it's the same period. Um, there were about uh, 20 uh, examples from the former Yugoslavia and Gro perceived them as uh, comparable to the uh, work of artists uh, of other socialist countries. Uh, he included Yugoslavia and uh, socialist. I don't agree with this opinion. Yugoslavia. The title of Yugoslavia was socialist, but we, they could travel, they could travel through Europe, uh, they could live in Paris, they could come back. So basically, it was part of the Western cultural world. So the meaning of some of the activities, uh, I, I, I perceive it as different uh, in the context of other socialist countries. It's, uh, what is interesting uh, is the selection of Czech artists, Groch se selection of Czech artists, Koli, such as Kolibal, Malich, uh, Brikcius, uh, De Martini, Saglova, Valoch, but also Ziegler, Grigar, Kocman, Krautvora, Moucha, Niemec, Novak, Štembera, and Whitman. 15 Hungarian artists uh, selected by Klaus Groch uh, were, it was a bright uh, step into the future because 
they ah, are still not forgotten even today. I selected uh, an example of those who, um, during the uh, publishing of the book, uh, participated in a friendly meeting, uh, but illegal meeting of uh, Slovak, Czech, Hungarian artists in a studio of uh, George Galantai uh, near Balaton. Gabor Alatai uh, is, is the author of one of uh, the introductions of uh, Grok's book. Andre Todd, uh, Tomáš Hence, George Jovanovic, uh, Laszlo Wagner, Jula Power, Andre Tirk, Geza Pernecki, and Tomáš Sendiobi. This, I'm sorry about the, my, uh, about the why and I. Uh, this is what I found on the internet. So these artists were participants in the meeting, which was initiated by Laszlo Becke on the Hungarian part, and uh, art critic Tomáš Strauss on the Slovakian part. Uh, I mentioned Petr Bartos, Stano Filko, Rudolf Sikora, Vladimir Popovic. This meeting demonstrated uh, the coexistence of artists uh, who uh, wanted to be different and uh, who wanted to cross the borders between life and art, and also crossing the state and political borders. In the end, uh, in the, to sum up, uh, the activities of young Slovak artists uh, who uh, crossed uh, the framework of traditional art towards ephemerity through conceptual or action works uh, could be discussed uh, for a lo very long time. We can search for their uh, inclinations or inspi inspirations in conceptual art. Uh, the history of this tendency in Central European art is uh, different and we can um, try to find what is similar, what is different. Uh, apart from looking at, into the um, relationships, we could also uh, monitor their rivality, their cooperation on the international uh, scene. If today's symposium uh, will result in a publication, I can promise that I will uh, also write a text in this publication and answer these questions. Thank you. Thank you.